Good morning, BBC Houston. Happy 37th birthday. Hallelujah. We are so excited to celebrate today with you all here in person in our or on our online gathering. We're so excited. We just want to bless Jesus this morning as he has given us 37 years of ministry. We want to thank you, our dream team, for making it happen as you serve week in and week out. So would you rise to your feet this morning? God, we thank you, Lord, for this day, God. You are a good God, and we know, Lord, that the best is yet to come. So today we celebrate 37 years of all that you are doing, Lord, and we know, Lord, that you are a God who will do more and more. We bless your name.
certainly great to be in the house of the Lord this morning as we worship him on the first day of this week. And so let us continue to worship God through our giving and our offering. This is probably one of my favorite times of worship in service on each Sunday, just because here we are, we can continue to worship God, not only through our singing, but also in our finances as we give back, bring back to God what he's already blessed us with. And even during these difficult times, we know that God is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. We know his promises are true. We know that God is with us and God is our provider. He's our Jehovah Jireh. And so at this time, let us prepare our hearts to worship God through our giving. And we know that these are uncertain times, but we know that even in these difficult times, the gospel of Jesus Christ has to continue to be spread throughout the entire nation, throughout the entire world. And we thank you, everyone here, sitting here in service right now, and those watching online who participate in this ministry and help us to reach others for Jesus Christ. And because of your faithfulness, we are always able to continue to share the vision that God has given us at VBC Houston to those around the world for them to love God, love people, discover purpose, and change the world. And so if you would like to give, uh, for those who are sitting here right now, you want to give by dropping um, an envelope into the bucket. We just ask right now that you just hold on to it for just a few minutes. And then at the end of service, you can drop off your offering into the blue buckets that will be uh, set up by the doors outside as you exit the service. If you want to, to continue to give online, and for those who are watching online, thank you for your faithful commitment in giving online. You can always visit vvchouston.com and just click on the red give button and you can give that way. And so at this time, let us pray over the offering that will be collected right now. God, we thank you, God, for this wonderful morning, God, for you are good, your love endures forever, God, and this is the day that you have made, and we truly rejoice and are glad in it, God. We are thankful for your love for us, God, that it has no bounds, God. We thank you, God, that you love us through it all. And God, as we take up the offering right now, God, we ask that you will bless it, that you will multiply it, God, that it may be used to advance your kingdom forward so that others will have this encounter with you and this personal relationship through your son, Jesus Christ. And for everyone who is giving right now, God, we just pray a blessing over them, God, for those who are giving right here in the house at VBC Houston and those who are watching online. We ask, God, that you would just meet them in their area of need, that you will pour out your blessings upon them, God. Bless them in their health, in their finances, God, in their relationships, in their school, and in their workplaces, God. We know, God, in this time that we live in right now, we need to grab hold of you more than ever. And we thank you, God, that you are there for us. And we just continue to lift up your name on high. We worship you in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. So we have a few announcements that we would like to go over right now. 
Obviously today we, is a very special day here at VBC Houston, and we want to remind all of our families with kids that the VBC Kids uh, Ministry will continue to be streamed online via YouTube. And so please join your kids right now if you're watching from home, and just click on the link that will be in the comment section on our Facebook live feed right now, and you can worship God with your kids right now at your uh, home right now. And so today is a very special day, as we've been saying, 37 years of ministry here at VBC Houston, and we simply could not have done it without every single person here, and for those who are watching online, without your faithful service and volunteering and just serving God with us along this journey for 37 years, we have been able to reach so many people for Jesus Christ. And we continue to just to praise God for the platform that he has given us here at VBC Houston, where not only do we reach people in our community, but around the nation and around the world and uh, over the internet. So praise God for that. And so today we just want to celebrate with everyone here. So after service today, join us out in the parking lot as we just celebrate together of God's goodness and just celebrate the entire dream team because truly it takes a great team to carry the vision that God has given us forward to so many people. And so today we have the Oh My Gogi food truck that will be on site on our campus from the time period of 1030 to 1230. <laughs> they have really good food there and every time we have the food truck out here I just get the munchies and I'm just ready to dig in. And so as we exit the service today. Just follow the Dream Team members that will guide you where to wait in line, and you will be given a meal ticket where you can use that meal ticket to select something from the menu in the food truck outside. So it'll be a great time. Once you grab your food, feel free to sit in your car because we still have to practice social or physical distancing. We want to be safe, and so feel free to sit in your car, roll down your windows, blast your AC. You will have music going on uh, here on campus outside. If you want to enjoy the celebration with your friends, you could even pull up your cars next to each other, roll down your windows and just celebrate. Or if you want to be outdoors, we will have limited seating available, uh, some benches and tables set up. But again, pr please practice safe physical distancing. For our kids, uh, for our families with kids, we're going to have a special VBC Houston birthday drive through from 12 o'clock to 12.30, and it'll be a great time. Um, we will have Dream Team members out there guiding cars with our families through the drive through where you can pick up a goodie bag, a birthday treat, and lunch for your kid. Feel free to join us in the celebration here on site in the parking lot as well. If not, you can always take it home and celebrate our birthday here at VBC Houston at home with your family and your kids. And so we know these are, you know, difficult times, different times. Normally, we would have a you know, big old celebration in the CLC where we were all close and high-fiving one another, handshaking one another, but because we believe that even in these small gatherings where we can practice safe physical distancing, this will continue to allow us to stay connected and just to continue to fellowship with one another. And so, that, so with that, those are the announcements. We just want to say thank you for everything, and uh, please at this time draw your attention to the screens right behind me. Amen. It's my honor to celebrate VBC, Pastor Con, and the Wynn family for 37 years of faithfulness. I consider y'all one of the preeminent ministries and churches in the world. Your desire and passion for God's presence and moving in the gifts has created a role model for other ministries and churches to follow. My prayer for you in this year and in the future is that the same God of Isaac in Genesis 26 that gave him a hundredfold harvest in a time of famine can bless you for 37 years of faithfulness and give you a hundredfold harvest even in a time of pandemic. I bless you and I'm so excited and filled with faith to see what God is going to do with the next 37 years of EBC. God bless you. Greetings to you, Dr. Khan and Jennifer and VBC Church, Houston, Texas. You have made an impact in your nation. The ripple effects affect your city, your nation, and the nations of the earth. 37, number three means a perfection. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Seven is completion. God has done a perfect completion in your season of 37 years. You're about to enter a greater area of breakthrough. God bless you, VBC, Houston, Texas. From Gisborne, House of Breakthrough, New Zealand. Kia ora. Pastor Conwin, Jennifer, and all my Wynn family, and to all my spiritual family there at VBC. Wow, July 10th was 37 years. Happy birthday, VBC. Happy anniversary. You know, time like light makes things manifest. Given enough time, 
the true manifestation of the impact of an individual or a ministry is revealed. Time has proven the incredible impact and legacy that VBC is leaving all over the world. I count it an honor and a privilege and I've been a part, a small part of this journey. And even through the joys and the ups and the downs, God has been faithful to work in each and every one of you to continue to share the gospel of Christ around the world. Only time will tell even more the greater fruitfulness in the next 37 years as we look back at the continued legacy of people being saved and healed and liberated and delivered because the message of God has given to you to impact the four corners of the world. I count it an honor to be a part of the family there. I count it an honor to be a part of the journey. And I can't wait to see all that God's going to continue to do. So happy birthday, happy anniversary. Bless you from Uncle Doug to the Wind Kids and, and to Pastor Doug to the rest of our family there at BBC. I can't wait to see what God is going to do for the lasting legacy of greater fruitfulness of all that we've already seen and all that God has already done. A huge happy birthday to BBC Houston. Hey, I wish I was there with you, but congratulations. What a huge effort that's been put in by Dr. Khan, Jennifer, you guys are just amazing. I love you and I miss you, and I wish I was there with you. But to yourselves, your beautiful family, all the church, I want to say congratulations that you have obeyed the call of God to do something amazing in Houston. God bless you for that. And I really do think that you have covered God's incredible call on your life for not only in Houston, America, but what you're doing in Vietnam is just incredible. It's an honor to partner with you in what's happening in Vietnam right now. And I'm believing to be there with you again as soon as these borders open. But congratulations, I love you. I love every part of your church, all the teams that make it happen, all the behind the, te behind the scenes people who are, are just incredible. And I miss being with you, but congratulations on this incredible birthday. You are fulfilling the purpose and destiny of God. Let me pray for you. Why don't you stand with me quickly as we pray. Lord, I speak the blessing of God over BBC Houston, over Dr. Khan and Jennifer and the family and the team as they lead this church. I pray right now, God, that incredible blessing be on the next season. And I want to declare over your lives right now, the best is yet to come. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Happy birthday. We love you all the way from New Zealand. Love you. God bless. Happy birthday, VVC Houston! This is the quietest birthday party I've ever seen. Come on, happy birthday, VVC Houston! How great is it that we get to celebrate 37 years of God's miracles and God's awesome things that he has done here at our church? I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy that you are all here. For me, if you guys know me, if you guys have been a part of my life, you know that birthdays to me are one of my favorite times to celebrate. And why? Why is it so fun? Well, you experience another year. You've gone 12 months. You also can reflect on the things that have happened in your life. You know, my birthday's coming up soon. It's in September, and I've been talking to my wife, and I, I said, man, I never thought I would feel like this. She said, feel like what? I said, man, I feel like I'm getting older. She, said, she just laughed. And I said, no, I'm serious. Like, I really feel like I'm getting older. Like, every morning I, I wake up, I have a crick in my neck. Every morning I feel like my back is hurting. I don't know why. I'm only turning 28. I don't know why I feel like that. Many of you are laughing. You're like, oh, man, just wait till you get to my age. But I'm feeling it already. But also I've been able to reflect the last two weeks that I've been thinking about VVC's birthday of the goodness that God has shown here at our church. For many of you, you've been here for a couple of months. For many of you, today's your first day. For many of you, you've been in here for, you've been here for a year. Others, you've been here for three, four, five. Some of you were born and raised in the church here. I remember myself, I remember pretty much just knowing church and only church. I remember growing up on the other side of the church before this was born, I mean this was built. And I remember the fellowship hall. I remember our, our old chapel over there. 
And some of you, as I'm saying these things, just be reminded of when the first time you came to VBC was. I remember meeting Paul for the first time. I thought, wow, this guy literally played football for UT, and he's here at our church. I thought to myself, when I met Joe Torres, I was like, wow, this is my sister's friends that they go to school with. This is so awesome that he's here. And I remember meeting a lot of you, and even some of the youth that are here. I knew you before you even knew who I was. And I remember just playing, you know, hide-and-seek in the chapel or playing hide-and-seek in the fellowship hall. I remember our old vending machine that we would have over there. I remember our old nursery that had the double doors that you had to open the bottom part to get into. And I remember volleyball outside. I remember playing basketball out on the blacktop. I remember experiencing my first vacation Bible schools. And as I was putting this together, I'm so grateful for the vacation Bible schools we've had because some of you guys have came from those things. I remember experiencing God truly for the first time here, and even though I was born and raised in the church. I remember baptisms. I remember the weddings that I attended. Some of you guys got married in the old chapel. I remember seeing every single one of you guys who are younger than me grow up, and I know that everybody has seen myself that I've grown up. And I remember just the devastation, the, the heartbreak of when I heard that, what, what do you mean, Dad, the church is burning down? I remember pulling up the news and seeing the fire and everything was burning and how sad I felt during that time. But our God is still good because here we are today in a new building, in a new facility, have a CLC, we have this beautiful sanctuary where some of you guys have created your memories here. Some of you have experienced the first times. I experienced the first time my parents have came to church is what you've experienced here. I've experienced the first time God has ever touched and healed my life. Some of you guys had dedicated your babies on stage. Some of you have met each other here, your best friends here at this church. Some of you may have been blessed and met your soulmate here at church. I've met my wife here. Some of you guys have experienced bringing your friends who you love dearly and witnessed them fall in love with God here in this church. 37 years is not something about, oh, our VBC is getting old. I've been here all my life. It's exciting. I may feel old The building may feel old, but we're still young and going. Because I remember the first time we had revival conference out in a tent outside. I remember having revival conference in the CLC and then transitioning over to this room. I remember running around the church building because I was so excited that God was doing amazing things. I remember playing drums for the first time. I remember seeing people get healed left and right. I remember seeing this entire room at the sound of a song of holy of holies. Everybody was kneeling on the ground just giving praises to God. These are memories that I'm holding on to. These are memories that I have experienced and I know that you all have experienced. And the thing that brings just joy to my heart today is knowing that I got to be a part of it. And you got to be a part of it. And you've got to experience the goodness of God and you've been able to experience that he is real here at our church. You've got to experience the freedom that you have received from him. You may have came in feeling heavy or full of anxiety or worries, but you have left a new person every single time. And and your tears, I know this sounds weird, but your tears may be in this carpet or on those chairs because you prayed and you prayed and you've heard from God. And these are the things, the reminders that you should have of how awesome it is to celebrate 37 years here at this church. 37 years of how good God is. 37 years to tell you that every single year God has done something great and amazing, that he's a good God. We have 37 years of a track record to know that our God is good. We have that. And one thing that I want to recognize and remember is this. Last week, Pastor Khan, he spoke a message about vision-driven life. And I thank God, I thank God 
that there was a young man one day who got the vision from God, who got the understanding from God, who understood that, God, if you save my life, I'm going to give my all and do my all. Instead of having a church in Seattle, California, wherever he could have gone, we have a man who is sitting in this room with us, who started it from the ground up, who was there from the beginning because he had a vision, he had a plan from God. And if we can, Can we honor Pastor Khan for just obeying and listening to God that 37 years we've been able to celebrate here in this church? And see, here's the thing. 37 years at VBC, it's not because of him. It's because he heard from God. Because he knew that he was made for something greater. He knew that this young refugee on a boat that was about to die came to a place where he decided, God, I need you even more, and I need a vision, and I need a purpose in my life. Can you save me right now? No water on the boat, no food. One of the younger guys on the boat, and people were dying. His job, honestly, was to help and get put, put the bodies in different places, the tra- traumatic experience that he had to know that God is real because there was no water, his lips were dry. Not an ounce of water was drinking during that time when they ran out. And a prayer was said, Lord, if you want, I will give my life to you, but you have to save me. And it started to rain. And the rest is history. We are here today celebrating 37 amazing years at VBC Houston. And you have been a part of it, and you have experienced the goodness of God here in this church. And that is something to give God praise about. That's something to be excited about. Church, like I said, this is a, this is a birthday party. It's too quiet to be a birthday party for me. I am so full of joy this morning. I was driving to church, and I, was, I, I got right in my car, ready to praise and ready to be all excited and happy. And then there was a big detour that I had to experience. I couldn't find my way to church. I had to call my sister because I knew she wasn't going to be able to find her way at church. And I had to call my other sister, Vivian, because I knew she wasn't going to find her way to church. I was driving. I had to make sure, hey, Siri, text my, oh, I got to make sure it doesn't pop up. I said, hey, Siri, text wife. Make a U-turn. Turn this way. Turn that way. And the only reason why I say that is this is because don't let the enemy make you think that you've made a big U-turn and you can't celebrate today. Because here's the thing, 37 years that you have been a part of it, you know in one of those years that you've experienced the goodness of God, and you know, and you know, and you know that he is real. And don't let the enemy rob that from you. One thing that I want to talk about from the recap of last week when Pastor Khan was preaching his message, he shared four things that I thought was important for us to see, and it's actually our vision statement, what we envision VBC Houston to stand for, what we want our people to be known for, what we want to be known for as a church. And those four things are, number one, love God. Say it with me. Number one, love God. Love God. Here we go. Number two, love people. Three, discover purpose. Change the world. Church, we got to get a little bit active today. Number one, love God. Love people. Discover purpose change the world. Those are the things that we want to be known for. Those are the things that we want our church to be known for. Those are the things that you should stand by. Love God, love people, discover your purpose, change the world. These are the things that I have been living by is that I love God with all that I can so that I can love people just as God wants me to love them. I've discovered my purpose here at the church, and I brought people here to discover their purpose, and I've also helped people fulfill and find out their purpose because of God. And last, I'm doing it every single day, trying to change the world. And that's exactly what you guys are made for. We're made to be world changers. We're made to be the light in darkness. We're made to make a difference in this world. Why? Why? Because we're set apart from this world. When we've accepted the calling from God, we've been set apart from this world. We're, not, we're, we're no longer a, a part of the world that doesn't know of the light, doesn't know of the goodness of God. We've been set apart. We know. And it's our job to show people, our job to teach people, our job to lead them to Christ, to show them the new way of life. Love God, love people, 
discover purpose, change the world. It rolls off the tongue really well. I want you guys to remember and say that all the time because that's what we stand for. If somebody asks you, where do you go to church? VBC Houston, what does it stand for? You know, you've been here, you've experienced it. What do y'all stand for as a church? Well, we love God with all of our heart. That's first and foremost. Second, we love people. Third, we're discovering our purpose here. Fourth, and we're changing the world together. And Pastor Khan last week spoke about how we have changed the world too. We, we have different things that are happening all around the world in Europe and in, in Asia and also in um, Colombia. We have in America, we have different things that we are doing to change the world. We are, if you didn't notice, Pastor Mike Rosas was up on the screen earlier. We have helped him to help start an orphanage out in Colombia where he's changing lives. We are doing something for the world. And you live in this world, so everything that you do has a ripple effect that impacts what God can do. But all you have to understand is this. I was made for this. I was made for this. See, if, if Pastor Khan didn't think that, we wouldn't be here. If Pastor Khan didn't believe that, I wouldn't be here. But we know that we serve a God who has created us in a unique way, and we are made for this. Church, I want you guys to say that to yourself. I am made for this. I am made for this. The more that you say it, the more that you'll believe it, that I am made for this. I am made for this. I am made for this. See, I told my wife, I said, a couple, a couple weeks ago, I said, babe, I, I want to share with you something. I've been saying something to myself all the time for the last few weeks to kind of change things about me. And she said, what? I said, just one more step. She said, what does that mean? I said, man, I have a really bad habit of like doing things halfway, like almost done, but then I just leave it like that. Like I drink a bottle of water and instead of going and just throwing it in the trash, which is only a couple steps away, I just leave it on the counter and then I walk away. Just one more step. Sometimes, my, sometimes I'll, I'll uh, try on a shirt. Nah, that's not the shirt I want to wear. So I'll just put it on the, I'll put it on the, uh, on the, the dresser. I'll just put it right there instead of hanging it back up. Just one more step. I just keep saying some stuff. Just one more step. Just one more step. Sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes I'll, I'll finish cooking and I'll wash the dishes and I look and I'm like, man, I spilled a lot of salt on the top of the counter. And then I have to think to myself now, just one more step. Just one more step. And the reason why I share that story with you guys is because that's what I want you guys to say to yourself. I was made for this. I was made for this. I was made for this. And the moment that you come into a point in which you doubt yourself, that God has created me for this? No, 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 no. I was made for this. I was made for this. I was made for this. The moment that the enemy is trying to tell you that you're not good enough, I was made for this. The moment that the enemy tries to tell you that you can't share the gospel, I was made for this. The moment that the enemy tries to rob or steal anything from you, no, 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 no. I was made for this. I was made for this, and I can do this. I was made for this. I was made for this. Hey, 37 years here at VBC Houston, that's something that we want to teach people, that you are made for this. You are equipped. You are trained. Go out and change the world. You are made for this. That's something that I have been saying to myself over and over and over ever since I became a pastor. Why? Because I've had people tell me otherwise, you're not made for this. And I was like, I'm made for this. Just smile. I'm made for this. I'm made for this. I've had people tell me that you're not going to make it far. I'm made for this. Sometimes when people say something a little bit difficult for you to listen to, say it in your head. I'm made for this. Thank you. I'm made for this. I'm made for this. I'm made for this. Because here's the thing. Nobody can tell you otherwise than God himself. Because he created you. And he instilled in you things that you may not even know about. But he made you. He created you. And you should know you're made for this. So the scripture that I want to share with you guys today as we open up comes from Jeremiah. And it says this, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nation. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I'm too young. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am too young. You must go to ev everyone I send, I send you to and say whatever I command you. Don't be afraid of them. For I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. That scripture literally says, 
you were made for this. That's something that you have to see that the scripture is saying, that you were made for this. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. You were made for this. You were made for this. If I can just drill that in one more time, you were made for this. And if there's anyone in this room that has doubt that you were created and that God loves you, no, you were made for this. If there's anyone in this room that is having doubt when you walked into this room that you are, are not good enough to be his child, I'm sorry, but you were made for this. And he loves you. And he created you. And you were made for this. My first point, and if you can, say it with me, is this. How do we know that we are made for this? First point, number one, because God said so. Because God said so. If you can, can we say that together? Because God said so. That's how, that's how I know that I was made for this. Why? Because God said so. That rung in my heart so much because I remember hearing that growing up. And I know many of you in this room have heard that growing up. You would go to your parents, Mom, Dad, can I please, please go to my friend's house? No. Stay. Why? Why can't I spend a night? Because I said so. And we've all heard that growing up. I remember growing up, Kevin Tran, my best friend, every weekend I could get, every holiday I could go, every day off of school, Mom, Dad, can I go to Kevin's house? Sometimes it's a yes, and sometimes it's a no. And I would fill in with, why? And they would say, because I said so. And something about because I said so kind of, you can't say nothing after that. When your mom and dad say, because I said so, you're kind of like, all right, great. They have the final word. I can't say anything. So what do you do? Hey, Kevin, my dad said no, but you go ask. He'll say yes. Kevin goes to ask my parents, Pastor Khan, can Sam come and spend time in my house? Sorry, Kevin. He can't come. Okay. Because I said so. Why is that so important for us to see? Because if we switch it in the other way, and if we switch it with our Heavenly Father, God, I'm not good enough. Yes, you are. Why do you say that? Because I said so. God, I can't pray for people for healing. Why do you think that? Because I'm not good enough. Yes, you are. Because I said so. I, 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 can't, I, I can't sing on the praise team. I, I'm, I'm too scared. I, I don't have a voice. Yes, you do. Because I said so. God, I, I've tried everything. I'm about to give up on life. I can't do it. I can't succeed. Yes, you can. Because I said so. And when God says so, what more do you need? When my God says that you are loved, can't doubt it. Why? Because God said so. If you can remember that because God said so, that's how you get to 37 years of where we're at. Because we believe that God said so. If we would have stopped, if Pastor Khan would have stopped and said, I can't pray for people like this. I can't believe in the Holy Spirit. I can't believe in praying for healing. I can't. It's not real. That's what people say. Who said that? Because what I said is that you would lay hands on people and pray for them, and the sick will be healed because I said so. And that's what our God says, because I said so. See, and it's not in a way that's going to make you sad or anything like that. It's a way for you to be encouraged that when your maker says, because I said so, I created you that way. You were made for this because I said so. What more do you need? What more do you need when, you're, when your heavenly father says, you can do it. You can do it. Don't give up. You can do it. Because I said so. See, there's something about a father and there's something about a father figure who tells you, son, you can do it. Daughter, you can do it. I love you. You can do it. Because I said so. And one of, those, one of my favorite stories to share, if you guys didn't know, Playing the drums wasn't my first choice anyways. I, I, I didn't want to do it. And I went to, uh, I think I went to like one or two lessons. I, said, oh, I don't want to do this anymore, mom. She's like, I paid for that drum set. I paid for those lessons. I, I don't want to do it. You're going to do it. Why? Because I said so. 
And thank God I listened to her because I said so. Because here I am today on the drums. And that's something that I'm reminded by what God says to me. There are times where I have doubt in myself. No, I, why me? Why, why? I remember the first Good Friday service that my father said, hey, you're going to preach. I said, no, not, not me. You. He said, no, you're going to preach. It's on Friday. You can do it. No, I'm good. No, you're going to do it. Okay. And I'm reminded by every single time that I was just confirmed with, because God said so and because God created you, I was able to do it. There are many times in our life that the enemy is going to try his hardest to take those words out of your life because I said so. For you not to be able to understand, for you not to be able to say it out loud that I was created for this. God created, for, God created me for this. The enemy wants to tell you otherwise. Why? Because when he knows that you understand that you were created for this and you know that the enemy has no power over your life, what can he do? Because God said so. And when God says that it is finished, it was finished because he said so. See, I like the phrase, because I said so, because it's not because I said so, question mark. It's because I said so, period. And there should be no doubt in your mind when the Lord says those things to you. Why, can, why am I going to ever be successful? I, I fail at everything because I said so. You're going to be successful. Well, how am I going to be able to pray for people and they actually get healed? I, because I said so. In my word, I said so. Be reminded that when your father says something, he means it. Be reminded that when your father says that he has a plan and purpose for your life, he means it. Understand that when he created you, when he set you apart, when he knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb, he said so. He said, so. this is my child. This is going to be my child. This is my child because I said so. And you were created for this. And many of you may be asking yourself, well, what's this, Pastor Sam? What is this? I, I, I get it. I'm created. I get it. You said it tons of times because he said so. I get it. I'm a child of God. But what is this that I'm created for? And, and what is this that I'm made for? What is this that you're saying that I can do? Well, here's the thing. We go back to love God, love people, discover purpose, change the world. Here's the thing. You're made for this, but discovering your purpose is finding out what you're made to do. Discovering who you are, discovering what God has created you to do is how you change the world. Many people in this room, you're a speaker. You can speak. Many people in this room, you don't like speaking at all. Many people in this room, you are gifted with talents that other people do not have. You can reach other people that I cannot reach. You can understand people on a different level. You can connect with people in your sphere of influence that I may not be able to. Or vice versa, we live in a family together to where if you understand that there is something that I could connect with one of your family members or friends, hey, love God, love people. It doesn't matter who you are. God loves me and I can love people just the same way. And that's the same mentality that we should have. Love God, love people, discover purpose, change the world. Change it. Why? Because God said so. Because God said so. On those days and those nights that you may feel down, on those days and nights that you may feel like you have no purpose, you have no plan, you have no vision, you have no future, remember that God said so. I want to read a scripture for you. All these scriptures that I'm actually going to read for you, they're, to me, they're more like phrases. They're more like things that people said that knew that they were made for this because God said so. The first one I want to read from you is from, is from Moses and Aaron. They said, after this presentation to Israel's leader, Moses and Aaron went and spoke to Pharaoh. They told him, this is what the Lord, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, let my people go. 
so they may hold a festival in my honor in the wilderness. You only say that if you know that God said so. You only say that with confidence to Pharaoh if you know that God said so. The second one that I'm going to read to you is from David, one of my favorite stories. David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. You only say that if God said so. And you only say that if you know that you were made for this. One more, Esther. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. Go and gather together all the Jews of of Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night, sorry, do not drink, do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will do the same. And then, though it is against the law, I will go in to see the king. If I must die, I must die. You only say that if you know that God said so. You only say that if you know that you're created for this. There are many people, many, many people in the Bible that have done things only because God said so. There are many people in the Bible that did things that changed the world, changed what what we are able to live in because God said so. One of the greatest stories that we have heard, Noah's Ark, who would build something that big? Because God said so. What about this? The greatest story of all in the Bible. Jesus Christ. Why? Why, why, would, you, why would you not fight back? Why would you just die on the cross for all of us? Because God said so. And it changed the world forever. Because God said so. How about this? How about you in your personal life? How about the next time that you see somebody that needs prayer, and you tell yourself, I, can, I can't pray for them. I'm too embarrassed. Oh, they don't even know I'm a Christian. I can't do it. You were made for this because God said so. And you can go and you can pray for people. Every single time, I kid you not, next time you see me or next time you know that I'm going to preach, watch me in that chair. Before I go, I always say, I always say this. I've never not have gone up and not said this to God. God, use me. I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. And I go up on stage. That's, that's what I do every single time. Because I know one thing, no matter what noise is happening in my life, no matter what is said in my life at all, I was created to do this. Why? Because God said so. The moment that I said yes to becoming a pastor here at the church, I said, it doesn't matter what anybody else has to say. It doesn't matter if people say that I can't do this. It doesn't matter if people say that I'm going to fail. It doesn't matter if people say you're too young, you can't do this. Why? Why does it not matter to me? Why? Because I was made for this, and God said so. And if I didn't believe that, and if I didn't stand by that, I wouldn't be here today. That's the honest truth. But because I believe it, because I know it, because I know who my father is, because I know what he has said, God said so. So you take it up with him. That's my attitude. That's how I see things in life. That's how I see being a child of God. The thing is, the enemy's going to want to come at you and say all these kind of things. But hey, take it up with God. He said so. When you say, devil, get off me. Why? Because God says so. That's how I see it. When the enemy tries to bring things my way and, it try, and he tries to mess up my life or, or, or do things, in the name of Jesus, leave me alone. Why? Because God says so. Sorry. And that's the attitude that you have to have, and that's the attitude that you have to see, is because when God says so, God means it. And that's the thing that has touched my heart. That's the thing that has changed my mentality of being a child of God. See, before, before I understood that God said so, and when God says so, God means it, before I believed that, I was someone who said, all right, I believe it. Great message, pastor. I'm going to change the world. I'm going to go. Monday comes around. What happened? Tuesday comes around. What happened? Wednesday comes around. What did he say again? Thursday comes around. Friday comes around. Saturday comes around. I don't even think I should go to church. I don't even think I deserve to be at church. 
And they're like, no, 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 go to church, go to church. So you get here in the morning, worship starts. You used to worship with your hands up and praise, and then you got your hands tucked in. I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't do this. Why? Who's letting you think that? Who's saying that to you? Because I know that's not God. I know that's not our Father that said, I've created you in my image. I know that that's not the God that said that he has a plan and purpose for your life. Because here's the thing. God said so. God said you are loved, and God said you are forgiven. So the enemy may try and say whatever he wants, but God says that you are forgiven from anything that you're going through. You are forgiven. You are forgiven. You are forgiven. See, something that I've seen growing up here for 37 years, or sorry, for 27 years of me being here at church, what I have seen in my experience of being here at church is this, is when you finally understand who God has created you to be and the plan and purpose that you have, those are where the testimonies come from. If you have been asking yourself, Lord, how, how come I haven't had a single testimony come out of my life? How come I haven't been able to share the gospel? Why am I scared? How come Pastor Sam says he prays for people, but I, I'm timid to go pray for people? The one thing that I've learned is this, is that if I put my trust in God's hands, if I do the things that he has asked me to do, he'll do the rest. He'll take care of the rest. How do I know that that's true? All of those stories that are, all those phrases or all those things that I've said and read to you. Take David and Goliath. Here's the thing. If David didn't know that he was backed up by the Lord, why would he go up against a giant? If Esther, someone who was in modern day terms, was picked because she was the most prettiest out of the pageant pretty much, why would she go up to the king and say otherwise when the king has final word, apparently? Why? Why would you go up to a pharaoh and say, release my people, let them go? Why? Why would you have that courage and boldness to go and pray for people? Why would you have the courage to go and declare over your family's life that you will be saved? My family will be saved. Why? Why would you do that? Because you can only do that if you know who your father is and what he's created you to do and what he's created for you to succeed in life. You can only do it that way. I, I, I told y'all two weeks ago whenever I was preaching, I said, I, I pray for my brother Kevin all the time. He goes to work. I pray for him. And I remember calling him on the phone. Hey, you good, man? I haven't heard from you in a while. And usually... KT's real chill and cool. Yeah, bro, I'm good. Okay. But he didn't sound like that that day. He sounded kind of tired. He sounded kind of like he lost hope. And I remember that day so clearly, and I'll never forget, because at that moment, I said, hey, bro, I'm praying for you. All right, man, have a good day. And I started praying for him. Because here's the thing, the enemy's going to try whatever he can every single day to take that joy and that happiness away from you. Because here's the thing, I remember praying with KT that he needed a job, and the job that he wanted was to become a police officer. And he wanted that job. I remember every single Friday, KT would come up here, and KT would uh, he'd do announcements. And he's so nervous. To the point where he would write it on his hand. He's so nervous. You know, it was crazy because it was like Kevin and I were like the duo best friends growing up in the church. You know, we were young, hiding and running around in the sanctuaries over there in the chapel. And then we grew up. And we're here in this building. Never did I think that both of us would ever stand in front of the church to share announcements, to pray for tithing, and then to get to the place where I'm standing here speaking a message. But why are we doing it? Why have we done it? Because God said so. Why do I get to share this story about Kevin and I? You know why? Because here's the thing. KT and I both grew up in this church. We both remember growing up in this church. If you ask me who my longest friend was or friend is, Kevin Tran. KT. All of our birthdays that he's had here and that I've had here, I remember it clearly. Why do I get to share that? It's because here's the thing. Our parents both understood that it was important for them to know that our children were miracles from God, or our children were blessings from God, so we want them to experience God too. And here we are. 
And many of you in this room that have children and many of, this, and many of you in this room that have grown up and you're a child of a parent that has come to VBC, you know, you know, you know, you know that your parents understand the importance of you being here at this church. Why? It's because God said so. Because God created you to be here. God created you to be in this church so that you can find your purpose. You can find and discover your purpose so that you can go out and change the world together as a family. I remember, you know, during like Father's Day and Mother's Day and all of the holidays that we have here. And I remember one time that my wife, before she was my wife and we were just dating at the time, she was praying hard. She's praying every single Friday, every single Sunday, praying and praying and praying and praying and praying for her family members. She would pray and pray and pray, and another family member would come to church. Pray and pray and pray, and another family member would come to church. Pray and pray and pray, and another family member would come to church. And the thing is, she never gave up. Why? Because she knew that the blessing that God had in her life, because God said so. I'm sharing stories after stories after stories of people who are in this church, people who have experienced God, because why? 37 years that we get to experience the goodness of God and how important he is. Reflect and remember the things that God has done. Reflect and remember. There are many of you in this room that third Friday was the first time you ever came to church, and we have someone here from that. And how awesome and how great it was for us to have a service that somebody outside of our sphere of influence has attended because of Timothy. And we have other people that have come to church because of someone in this room. And we have seen over and time and time again, somebody else that can testify is on, sitting in the back, prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed, and his father-in-law got saved. Why? Because God said so. That's something that you have to hold on to. And if those are the things that you can leave with today, I was made for this. Why? Because God said so. So why do we forget these things? Why do we forget these things? This is my next point right here. We forget these things because the three C's, and these three things that I thought about, these three things that came to mind whenever I put this message together. I said three C's, the three things that the enemy wants you to not understand. He wants you to copy, compare, and criticize yourself. Number one, he wants you to copy the world. Number two, he wants you to compare yourself with others. And number three, he wants you to criticize yourself. Why? Because all three of those things will take you away from your purpose and vision from God. The three C's. Remember that. Write it down. Next time you go through something tough, ask yourself, what three C's did I fall for? Because when you can realize those three things, you can call upon God and say, God, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh nope. Sorry, enemy. I don't, I'm not going to receive that. Why? Because God said so. I'm not going to receive that. I'm not going to compare myself to others. I'm not going to compare myself to the world. I'm not going to copy the world because I'm not a part of the world. I'm a part of the light. I'm a part of the kingdom. I'm not going to criticize myself because I know that my imperfections, yes, are there, but because I have Jesus Christ in my life, he is helping me through those things. He has forgiven me already. Those are important for you to remember, and those are important for you to understand that the enemy is going to try to get at you with the three C's. Don't let it happen. How? How, how, how can I not let that happen, Pastor? Because those are the three things that I actually always go through. I actually thought that thing right before I walked into this building today. I thought to myself, there's no way, I'm criticizing myself, no way that I can come to church. Or during the week, you're comparing yourself. I, I can't do this because somebody else, somebody else is doing it better than me. I can't do that. And you're copying the world. Those are the things that you're following through. You know that you're not supposed to do those things. But because the world says otherwise, you copy. There's a time in my life, and I remember clearly that I fell for the three C's. I fell for it. The beginning of college, my first year at U of H, I fell for the three C's. I never thought in my life, I said, uh, I'm a child of God. Never thought I would fall for the three C's. And I saw myself time and time again, copying the world, comparing myself to others, and criticizing myself that I'm not like them. And all these things growing up, my, my, my parents and also God has instilled in me, no, 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 no. You're a child of God. You're a child of God. You're a child of God. And I remember when I, when I went through that time in college, I was just like, 
I knew no one at U of H. I had no friends at U of H. And I thought, all right, here's a group of people that I want to be like. Here's a group of people that I want to interact with. And the moment that I started to hang out, the moment I started to be a part of a new friend group, I started to criticize myself. I started to say to myself, well, why do you hold yourself at this standard? Why can't you just do what they do? Why, why, why do you have to say certain things? Why not just say what they say? And I was falling for the three C's and letting the enemy just speak into my life. Yeah, go ahead. Copy the world. Compare yourself to others. Why not? Criticize yourself. Go ahead. And it just helped the scheme of what he wanted to do in my life was take away my vision, take away my idea of me being created in God's image, take away the fact that God said so. And he wanted to do those things. And like I said, those three C's, if you find yourself falling for any of those three things, remember, remember, remember that God said so. I'm created for this. I don't need to be like that. God created me for this. Next time you see somebody that needs prayer, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this because God said so. God said so. God said so. And during this time, during this time of uncertainties, during this time that we may not understand or may not know what's happening in our world, I know that my Lord said he has a plan and purpose for my life. I know it. I know it because he said so. I know it because he's a good God. And I know the things that are happening right now in our world today, the hate, the violence, the virus, all of these things I know 100% is not from the Lord. I don't receive it. Why? Because the Lord that I know didn't come on this world to bring hate, to bring violence, to bring, bring viruses. No, peace, love, joy. That's what he brings. That's how I know it's not from God. And that's how I know I don't receive it. That's how I know that I need to pray even harder. God, let the world see. Let the world know that you didn't create us to be like this. And you didn't create us to hate one another. You created us to love one another. Love God. Love people. Discover purpose. Change the world. Why is it so important to understand it in that order? Because if you can love God first, loving others, a little bit easier. I promise you that. But if you try to love people, then love God, all of those things that you are going through, you will put it on others. But if you love God, then love people, and you have your relationship with him first, you and him, you'll take care of the things that you need to take care of with him so that loving others, you don't bring on what you're going through. Discovering your purpose with God being first knows that you're not discovering your purpose from what you've seen in the world, what you're experiencing in the world, but no, you get it straight from him. That's how you know. Why is it so important for us to have loving God first? It's because when you change the world, you know exactly what you're trying to change it for. We're trying to change it so that there is more love, peace, joy, and his presence in the world. But if you try to flip that order, if you try to flip-flop, switch the things, because I can't love God first, I can love people first, but loving God is harder— if you can fix that order to love God first and love people, discover your purpose and change the world, I guarantee you, I guarantee you that your life will be different. You will see, you will see, you will see that you were created for this. See, on the, behind me it says the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. There are many of us in our life where we're wondering, What's going to happen next, Lord? What's going to happen next in our world? What's going to happen next in my life? I, I can't see that anything good is going to happen, Lord. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. I remember we were singing the song, we were singing it, those lyrics today. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. I and praying for every single one of you that you will be able to understand that when God says so, God says so. And that if you're dealing with something in your life right now, the words that you hold on to, the words that you can hold on to in your tough times is, God said so. 
There's nothing more powerful than understanding that when your father says so, your father will do. Something, there's something so powerful about that because it brings confidence. It brings like almost security to you that I can do this because my God's gonna back me up. I can do this because my father's right behind me. I know it. How do you know that he's with you everywhere? We are promised an advocate, the Holy Spirit who lives in our life to remind us the things that we have learned, to remind us the things that we should be doing, to remind us that we have the power of the Holy Spirit in our life to pray for people and that they will be healed because he said so. And church, I, I wanna ask that in our personal lives, in order for us to change the world, in order for us to be a church that changes the world, we have to understand that we were made for this and that the enemy may try to say whatever he wants to say. The enemy may try to steal what he wants to steal. The enemy may try to set up any trap to catch you, but it doesn't matter. Why? Because our Father in heaven has already taken care of everything that we need in our life. Our Father in heaven has already had a plan set out for our life. Our Father in heaven is constantly with us, protecting us and guiding us and helping us to see that there is no weapon formed against us that will prosper. Why? Because he said so. In scripture, he has said so. That there is no weapon that is formed against us that shall prosper. And if you know that you're being attacked by the enemy, if you know that there are things that are happening in your life, all you have to say is, no, I'm not going to receive it. I'm not going to let this happen in my life. No, because my God said so, that no weapon formed against me will prosper. My God said so. And church, that's the journey that I want us to be on. Many of you guys have been asking us, so what's the next steps here at our church? What's the next steps? What are we going to do? What's next? Constantly, every day, change the world. What's the next step, pastor? What are we supposed to do with our lives? Change the world. I, I, I've discovered my purpose. I know what I'm good at. Okay, how can you change the world with what you're good at? How can you do it? How can you do it? There are many of you in this room that I see talent after talent after talent after talent. And if only we could catch hold of what God wants us to do with that talent, we could change the world. There are many things that you are good at that I am not good at. I need help with. There are many things that you may need help with that I'm good at and I can help you. And we can change the world together. One of the, like I said, one of the greatest tag teams that we had. For me, my belief was me and KT on a Friday. Because we both understood at that time, hey, God wants to use us at this time to however he wants to use us, let's do it. Real eyes, real eyes, real lies, KT. And if you remember that phrase, you remember that he shared that one day and he always used to say, shackle me, Lord, keep me close to you. And I, get to stand up here today and share that I once was a young boy running around the church, causing a ruckus, hiding underneath the pews, hiding in different closets, playing hide and seek all around church all day long. To someone who is here standing on this stage, preaching a message saying that I was made for this moment. I was made to speak. I was made to preach. I was made to make a difference in this world because God said so. And church, Whatever it is that you're going through in your life, whatever obstacle you're going through, whatever situation that is tough right now in your life, just declare it right now. I'm going to get through this because God said so. I'm going to get through this because God said so. And if you're at work and God's trying to tell you to pray for somebody, to be there for somebody, I can do this because God said so. Church, let's pray. Holy Spirit, I ask right now that if there's anybody in this room that is dealing with a tough time, 
that if they have doubts of who they are, if they have doubts of what you can do in their life, Lord, I ask right now that you change the thoughts of your children that we understand that you have created us. We understand that you have made us. We understand that you have called us according to your word. You have made a plan and purpose for our life. And God, we know that if the enemy is trying to come against us, we can say no because my God said so. And we can know that you are a game changer in our life. That God, if we can have vision and a purpose through you, the best is yet to come. And God, we ask right now during this time that you be the center of our lives. You be the center of our world. Help us to love you more, to love people, Lord. Help us to discover our purpose as a church and as individuals so that we can change the world. And God, you have created us for a time such as this. You have created us to make a difference. You have created us to change the world. Why? Because we are a reflection of you. And Lord, you change the world every day that you were on it. And God, we ask that as we go and make a difference in our world, that we declare in Jesus' name that 2020 will change, Lord. That we will see a changing of things happening because you said so. And we declare right now that in Jesus' name, that anybody who is sick be healed in Jesus' name. And we declare that anybody who is dealing with uncertain times right now, that God will change whatever it is that you're going through. We declare right now that anybody who is dealing with hurt, pain, anxiety, that the Lord says that you will be healed. You will be healed, you will be healed. Ask and you shall receive. Ask and you shall receive. Many of you in this room right now are asking the Lord, bring breakthrough in my life from my family. Bring breakthrough in my life from my spouse, from my sister, from my brother, from my aunt, my uncle, my cousins. You're asking for a breakthrough. Lord, I want them to know you even more. Just declare it over your life right now. That my family will be saved because you said so. My family will be saved because you said so. That freedom will come from my brother or my sister or my mother or father because you said so. That I believe and that I trust that I am healed because you said so. I believe and I trust that your promises from my life are good because you said so. I believe that you are always with me because you said so. And I believe that a breakthrough is coming in my life because you said so. I believe and I believe, and I know that I was made for this because you said so. And I know that I can speak and I know that I can share your gospel because you said so. And I know that you will protect me every day because you said so. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Church, if any of you in this room are dealing with something that you have Fall in for the three seats. And you need prayer. Please come to the front and let the pastors and leaders pray for you. You know why? Because God said so. God has asked us to pray for those who need prayer, for us to come together and iron sharpens iron. 37 years here at our church, that's how we do it. That's how we're going to celebrate today. As you go out and as you enjoy and as you have fun out in, in, in the parking lot, Remind each other, hey, I remember when I first met you. I remember the first time you were at church. I remember this happened to you. I remember that. I remember we got baptized together. And just bring joy to one another to know that we are celebrating an awesome time and celebrating an awesome day here at VBC Houston. Church, let's go enjoy some food outside and enjoy each other's company. We can't wait to see you guys next week.